Hello, my name is Nancy Guevara. I'm a Rascuache textile artist, illustrator, and children's book author. And this is a Platica. So I just remember drawing and making things when I was little. I would say maybe one of the first people that I observed making art was my mom. Um, she would sew, um, she used to work at a, like a dress factory and um, she had her sewing machine at home. And so I would see her sewing all types of things like pillowcases, uh, curtains, even like uh, Halloween costumes for us. Um, she had uh, five kids, five girls, and so there were a lot of costume uh, <laughs> costumes being made. Um, so I was just, I think, curious about objects that I would see around the house. Like she had a lot of um, uh, textile scraps. Um, there were a lot of uh, even just like wooden scraps and and so I kind of got through in, into like rascuachismo very early on because I was just kind of making these objects out of found objects right uh, making the, these small art pieces and I used to re like draw a lot all the time when I was when I was little um, and so for me that was like a way to really express myself um, when I was young. Um, so yes, I think it's important to have centers like Centro Cultural Aslan in San Antonio. I really feel like these spaces are uh, anchors for the community. They're important meeting spaces, um, all the programming that happens. Um, just how important it is for us in, uh, you know, our quality of life to have arts and culture. Um, actually, it's it's one of the key things that we need, right? Um, uh, you know, in, in, in our everyday lives. Um, and so, definitely, it's it's really important um, to preserve these these spaces and to um, keep the the programming going. Este, you know, traditionally meeting spaces are really important, um, and just just how kind of cities are built um, and structured, right? There's not a lot of sometimes there's not a lot of space for like public space. Um, there's not a lot of thought around urban planning on how people can meet and connect. Um, we are very naturally, very communal social beings, and so it's really important to have these um, centers of, of meeting and interaction and community and, and sharing and healing um, in arts and culture. And um, I love that this space exists and it's definitely really important for the community. So I took my first formal art class uh, at the Vidal M. Trevino School of Communications and Fine Arts in Laredo, Texas. Um, and there I realized throughout the four, four years of being there and I, I decided to keep doing art and keep taking these art classes that I could do this as a profession. I didn't think it was a career until my teacher was like, no, you can actually study this and keep going. You can even go to college and keep studying art or design, right? Um, and during that time, not only did I take my first uh, art class, but I also was, in high school, was a part of a few public art mural projects that I did with my classmates. And so that kind of opened up like kind of my scope even more um, with creating, being a part of artwork that would not only um, is communal, right, but really transformed and informed like the public space um, and really was a way to like, you know, the traditions of muralism and murals 
um, and the history of them being uh, a part of resistance, a part of protest. So that really kind of informed my later. Um, so first I decided to keep studying art and then I decided to, to keep concentrating on art for resistance, art for protest. So then I just kept going along that trajectory. Um, I was born and raised in Laredo, and so um, one of the things I experienced through, through painting that community mural was that we, it was one of the first times that I saw ourselves reflected, right? Um, usually in Laredo, like in other parts of the border in Bronzo, you see border patrol vans, you see uh, immigration, you see it's, it's a lot of kind of militarization. And so this was the first time that like kind of the beauty um, of our community was reflected back to me in seeing Cesar Chavez and seeing farm worker, um, the farm worker resistance, um, and the Matachines, este, the cultural figure of the, the Virgen de Guadalupe. And so um, I like to say from then on, I, I really focused on making art for resistance and art that really reflected um, the beauty and, the, and, and really the true, uh, our true selves, right, on the border. Um, and so that's, that's what my work focuses on. It's, it's representations, it's reflections on um, border people, este, partly based on my experience, right, and um, the experiences in my community, este, and um, just making work, continuing that work and that, that tradition of using art as a voice for the people, as resistance, and as uh, protest to the, the many issues that we're facing on the border. I would say follow what you're passionate about. Really observe yourself and like what you're drawn to. Um, if you like drawing, like explore that. If you like comics, even if you're like really into animation. I mean, there's so many like creative careers um, that you can that you can pursue. And like, um, I always put my creative projects first, like really focusing on the work that I wanted to do, that I was passionate about, that I was getting excited about. Um, and that doesn't always necessarily leave like uh, a lot of financial stability or financial gain, right? But it's kind of like you have to balance, keep that balance of, you know, doing the work that you enjoy and that you know you feel called to, and also making, um, you know, organizing yourself, making a plan so that you are, you know, you can be sustainable. Like it can be financially sustainable for for you. Um, and so, you know, a lot of it's it's very like there's a common narrative, especially amongst like, you know, Mexican immig immigrant communities that. Um, you know, our, our parents are like, don't study that, that doesn't, you know, leave a lot of money and stuff. But um, I would say really do pursue, <laughs> pursue what you love, pursue, um, explore what, what you're drawn to.